okay, but I have somebody that uh, will, will save me. You will die there. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today we have something extremely special. We have current world champion and Italian champion, Giacomo Di Mola, Hello, out here everybody. in the Mediterranean in winter. Going to see why this man is the best in the world today. Cannot wait to get in the water and just observe and see what fish come over the side of the boat because I didn't do a good job of that yesterday. What do you hope to shoot today? I hope to shoot a big grouper. Rofos? Yes. What do you want, Klaus? Just coffee. <laughs> <laughs> The first place we are heading is a small hole for white groupers. I dived it the day before, but only saw small lionfish. The first thing Giacomo does after entering the water is a shallow duck dive to get the air out of the wetsuit and check everything is comfortable. Then he grabs the rope on the back of the boat for Klaus to take him precisely to the GPS mark. Small place. It's one just hole in the nothing. And if you don't shoot the fish outside, it's almost impossible to shoot him inside. The problem is when they go inside, they put all mud out and you don't see nothing. Once we arrive to the spot, the engine is put in neutral, a final breath and he's off. Look how smooth that duck dive is. Giacomo wasn't wearing a camera, so this is me from yesterday, just to illustrate how small this spot was. Having a boat driver that can put you exactly on the right spot is critical and something I really took away from these two is the teamwork needed to succeed. If you landed 15 meters away it would be a struggle to locate the hole. You can also see my fin kicking up the mud on the bottom. Any fish that moves into that hole will do the exact same thing. No fish home. No, no lucky. Was one fish but uh, when I was going down already we went inside with the uh, the dust. Dust, yes. I get my suit on and do a few breath holds in shallow water to get my dive reflex going. Then we're heading out to a place that Klaus knows which can sometimes have the gold blotch groupers out of the holes. I'm not so great at hole hunting, so this suits me just fine. I can slowly start to see the bottom structure and there are lots of smaller fish. Just like Klaus said, gold blotched grouper out of the hole. Bingo. These male gold blotch grouper, or stira in Greek, are a stunning fish, and it's easy to see where they get their English name from. I've never shot a stira in the Mediterranean, only in Spain. There were so many fish down there, just didn't even have to get all the way to the bottom. So 26, 27, and this guy was just... So I shot it! Bravo, bravo Daniel. The first stira, bravo. Finally something to eat. <laughs> yeah. The next spot was for Giacomo. Special tactics. How much does this belt weigh? I think it's uh, 14, nothing like this. 14 kilos. Yeah, it's uh, 8.5 suit there. He is now going to dive around some rocks in around 35 to 40 meters with the variable ballast technique. You can see he has two weight belts on, the heavier of which will be dropped once he approaches the bottom. With this extra weight, only a few kicks are needed to get down from the surface and then it's gliding to the bottom. One little thing I notice is Giacomo angles his fins slightly to perform a spin near the bottom. This way he can quickly scan the area for the fish or the structure that he wants to head to. He then selects his direction and drops the belt. 
the belt is attached to the rope which is short enough so it doesn't bounce on the bottom and scare fish. Using this method of variable ballast allows the diver to control the direction of the descent more so than the traditional method of just holding on to a large pendulum of weight. Some minutes later, he returns to the surface with an unloaded gun. I lost the moment and turned and I, I didn't cut it, uh, cut it good. So big? Ah, it's, it's quite big, yes. Ten. Ten. Uh, ten. Okay, ten. Now that the grouper is stuck in a hole at 35 meters, Giacomo attaches a buoy to the gun and locks off the reel. This is to prevent the fish going deeper into the cave and can also sometimes bring them out with the action of the waves. He is now going to wait at least 15 minutes between dives at this depth. When I was here in the summer, obviously I was very fortunate to dive with Klaus and you guys dive together all the time. Um, most people in the world aren't going to have access to you guys for one-to-one -one training, but um, you did show me your masterclass that you and Klaus made over COVID. Uh, what's in the masterclass for people? What can they expect from this? We put uh, practically 25 years of experience in deep spear fishing and uh, starting from how to manage your buoyancy in constant weight. There is a very, very good lesson in relaxation, guided relaxation. I remember this, so, yeah. And, uh, and of course, uh, um, variable ballast, the three types, uh, the two methods that I use. Uh, so they, yeah. they, you see, yeah. I use it uh, with belt. Obviously, it's not for beginner spear fishers. It's for mm -hmm. you know, people that have you know, a few years of experience but want to yeah. try yeah, they want to, to make yeah. this, this leap yeah. and, uh, and, uh, and see something else. And this yeah. is, the for you, the safest method, you think? The variable ballast? I for, think for that if you, use, if you use the variable ballast, to uh, spear fish in depth that uh, you are used to fish in constant weight mm -hmm. is uh, the most uh, safe way to make yeah. spear fishing, to make deep, deep spear fishing. And with a, a long time on the surface. A long time. On the like surface, now, yeah. we're waiting yeah. between dives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One great thing about the Mediterranean is you don't have to worry about sharks taking your fish. So you can be patient and give yourself adequate recovery times between dives. After three more dives on this fish, Giacomo brings the beautiful grouper to the surface. Bravo! Oh. It was a bit hard because uh, on the first dive, uh, where we, sh we shoot, it uh, uh, was not good. Uh, the shoot was not good, it was here. So, the fish going inside, and uh, now I had to shoot it in another uh, on another hole, and uh, and cut the first shaft. And how deep was this here? It was 35 meters. Just in the shallows. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. Lesson learned. Be sure of your shot placement and don't rush trying to recover the fish. Now, off to the shallows for me. Klaus doesn't waste any time and gets straight to the holes he knows. He soon returns with a double shot. Doppio Sago! Very nice. I make one dive here because it was the dentex and everything. You saw dentex? Yeah, yeah. That magic word for me, dentex. I saw them on several dives in the area as well as some gilt head sea brim, but as soon as you raise your eyebrows looking at a gilt head, they disappear. The bottom structure here was absolutely incredible. The rocks looked like pages in a book. The Orca V finds its mark. This isn't a big dentex, of course, but it's more than enough for a meal. There is just something about these fish that still gets me so excited when I see them. We move to another area looking for Corvina. It was around 30 meters deep, so Giacomo decided to constant weight instead of variable weight this particular dive. 
Again, the boat engine stops, final breaths, and down he goes with a duck dive technique I have never seen before, but it sure seemed to work. Notice again as he approaches the bottom, he gently spins around to scan the bottom with minimal effort. Even the way he moves along the bottom is extremely slow and calm. He holds his gun close to his body as he glides over the rocks with just a few fluttering kicks. While no fish were speared on this dive, I kept noticing Giacomo keeping his snorkel in his mouth and seemingly clearing it before reaching the surface. I had to find out more as I've always been told this is a huge no-no when spearfishing. Obviously today, some very deep dives from you. Um, one thing I noticed immediately is you do something very different to me. Apart from the depth is the snorkel in the mouth. Yeah. But I've always been told all my life, you know, to take the snorkel out because it puts the water in your mouth if you black out. All the schools say this, but uh, I'm not the only one because if you if you look at some um, uh, old videos also from uh, Pedro Carbonell, uh, Pepe Amengual, uh, Gabriele Del Bene, uh, Molteni, Ricardo Molteni, they do the same. Yeah. Uh, we believe that uh, if uh, the accident needs to happen. Mm. Uh, definitely, will happen on the last, on the last um, five meters. Yeah, yeah in the last five meters. But pr m most of all, on the on the um, spear fishing, happen when you are in the surface. So, if you can reach the surface, and uh, with this technique that uh, uh, you have the, mm, the snorkel in the mouth. So, in this way, I go, and uh, when I'm close to the surface, you blow out the air. In case of blackout, you will be there in blackout, but uh, when you will start again to breathe, you can breathe. Otherwise, you will be with the face down, without con combination, without connection with the air. Okay, yeah, yeah. And so if you are in blackout and uh, the, your body will not see you or the, the boatman will not see you, you will die there. And the, the, the most important thing is that you need to think that always, okay, you are with the body, but you are alone. So this, this, this that, that is the difference that save you, that will save you. Because when you start to think, ah, okay, but I have somebody that uh, will will save me, mm. you already are risking. Okay, yeah. So And so you're trying to yeah. make the risk as small as possible yeah. for yeah. only yourself yeah. as well, yeah. yeah. Okay. I found that conversation really interesting about the snorkel and I hope it gives you something to think about. I practiced this a few times over the following days, but it was hard to break a 20 year habit of spitting out my snorkel. It felt so unnatural. There was time for one last spot in shallow water for Dentex. Giacomo was filming me and this is a moment I will never forget. The Amberjacks and Dentex were quite calm and curious, and then this standout fish started coming in. When I said I would never forget this moment, I didn't expect it to be because it was the most embarrassing moment of my life, missing a Dentex in front of the best spearfisher in the world. How you did this? How? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Where is the Dentex? The Dentex is still there because I missed the <laughs> shot. And Giacomo filmed me missed the shot, which is even more embarrassing. But yeah, this happens sometimes. But it happens less. It's better than the shoot in the hole. 
in the it's small better hole. Than shooting the raw foss in the hole. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Easier to get out, but maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Definitely. Join us next time where Giacomo answers the questions that you sent in. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and see you on the next adventure. Uh, <laughs> Giacomo, how many dives did it take to get this fish? <laughs> uh, this was quite difficult, eh?